All right, welcome back. I'm just going to actually show a trade I'm thinking of doing today on a Euro USD buy. So I'm basing this off the fact that there's a lot of liquidity here. I'm looking at the 4 hour, we've pushed up and broke this high. So I do expect that we pull back, um, tap into this order block here. Maybe back into we retest before taking off. So ultimately, just going straight down into the five. Because I'm going to make this quick. I wanted to see the market take in all this imbalance here. Close it all in. And then I'm going to look for an entry around 10, between 10 o'clock and 11. For those of you that understand time, you'll understand why. So yeah, I expect the market just to keep trending down for now. Once it fills this imbalance, and then around the time of 10 and 11, I'm going to look for a change of character, like a push-up. And I'm going to aim for these highs here. Um, I could go a lot further, possibly these highs here, but Tuesday, Tuesday could make the higher low of the week, and it might just come down to attack this. But ultimately, I'm waiting for these order blocks over here to be tapped into before I even think of doing a buy entry. So something like this comes into this market. I'd like to see aim for this. Stop loss, either just below here, or if we get a nice market structure that runs into this area, I'll even tighten my stop loss. But that's my prediction, and should it play out, then you'll see me doing an entry today. So I'm just going to pause the video, let things play out, and we'll go from there. Welcome back, folks. A few minutes have passed, but I just thought I would make the chart a wee bit clear for what I can see in my mind, and hopefully it's making it a little bit clear for what you can see. So for me, my eye would be looking at this swing point here as buy side liquidity, and I'd probably always go a little bit short of that if I was getting into buy. My eye side's always drawn for this to this here also. Um, it's sell side liquidity and retail thinking is if you look along here um it's got a different color that these touch points here here and here now imagine the chart hadn't like let's put this in replay just to show you imagine this is what you were seeing as a retail trader you think this is support because it's obviously tapped it once, twice, three times now. And you're going to look at that as a retail trader as an opportunity to buy. But as you know, double bottoms or triple bottoms, whatever people want to talk about, it's just a build up of liquidity. It's just a retail way of thinking. And it's just what the market sets up for people that they just want to take money off. So bear in mind, Resistance and support isn't really, in my eyes, a thing. It's just a way to build up liquidity and a way to take money. So just referring back to what you should be looking at. You know, when we had this big push yesterday, you know, there's all this price imbalance here that just needs to be filled up. And it does look like, you know, this will be a nice time to buy. But if you take a look at the, the, the DAX, so the US dollar currency index, you know, we still have a lot of imbalance to fill up here also. And I just like to see the market, you know, make its way, you know, into this and hopefully start breaking down. If it starts breaking down, then that's when I'm going to start looking for buys in here so again this is just the bipolar opposite of what you would see on the dax eh? you know you want to see the market making its way down into here 
filling up the imbalance, you know, maybe start to see a push out of it and then maybe look for an entry uh, to take out this, this buy side liquidity that sits and rests up here. So I'll leave the chart like that and um, you can pause it, take a screenshot of it, um, see what you learn something from it. You know, this is what you want to be drawing your eyes to, what you want to be seeing every single time. And hopefully it helps you to get, you know, make better decisions of when and where to actually enter the market. And um, study it. Study it over and over and over and over again. And I promise you, in time, it will start to bed into your memory. But this is what you want to be looking out for. So I'll pause this again for another while. And I'll resume it whenever I feel that, you know, I've seen the imbalance fill up and the DAX is sort of coming together with it. And if I find an entry, then I will record it and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, welcome back. Just sort of do a little update. You know, we've now run down into these order blocks, these two order blocks here, the five minute, and we have filled up this imbalance. So for me now, that's when I would switch down to the one minute and I would start looking for the likes of this swing high. I'd look for a break. You know, change a character to appear. Um, I'm not saying it's this one, but it could be the next one. Do you understand? And that's when I would start to think, right, maybe I should start looking for buys now. Now, the market may well come down um, just to take out these lows before possibly pushing up, but I don't think so. I do believe that that's the move they wanted to make. Now, we might see it fluctuate and maybe push down a little bit more, but ultimately... I'm going to look for an entry to buy, should it appear, to take out these highs. Now, bear in mind, this is also the London high. So when the New York session kicks in, um, that would be a real good target, I feel, to go for for a decent trade, uh, well, 4.6 to 1 trade, roughly. So we're going to play it by ear from here on in. This is the point where you have to sit in your hands now, wait for the proper signal for use of a better word to appear and that's why i'll just sit down in the one minute now i'm going to remove this order block you know actually you know what i'll leave it on just so you can see it but this is where i go down to one minute now and i'm going to base things on time of entry and market structure or break structure or such it could fall on down you know what i mean but Looking over at the DAX, uh, you know, we've taken out this buy side liquidity. It's still got this here to fill up. So this is why you got to be patient. You know, it might not fill it up, but you have to, you have to look for, say this pushes up with strength into here, but Euro holes in this area. Then for me, that's a good sign to buy that Euro is the stronger currency, at least for today or this moment. And that's the way I would use the correlation with the DAX. So say this pushes up, fills up this imbalance here, then on Euro holds this ground. Then for me, that's a good indication that it's a good time to buy. So I'll pause the video again. Um, Watch it back, you wish to have a better understanding of it. And when things change and I feel the right moment is to get in, I will resume the video and I'll explain why. All right, so now I find that we've had a, a fill of the imbalance. Um, if we go down to one minute, I just zone this in a little more. So for me, this little order block here is where I made it a wee bit more precise and the market has come down into it. You know, we've spiked out it a bit. We've broke this little change of structure here and change character here for me. So I'm going to look for a buy now. I'm um, going to go for 
Well, eighty pips. Oh, sorry, eight pips should be plenty because we're for fair value gap here also. Um, just mark it up. Here is a fair value gap, and a little order block down here, and this is the one that broke at high. So that's ultimately what I would be looking for as a as a buy trade now. I know it's a little bit earlier than I would usually. So I'm just reaching for a piece of paper, and I would usually go for. But if it comes up, it comes up, and um, I just feel like that's the trade to take to take out that London high also and we're starting to show that we filled them balance and starting to get that that pattern here this is really what I like to see you know fill them balance took out the change of character and um, we've printed for a value gap so it's time to start to actually put the money where the mouth is and putting a trade on with me and say stop loss they say it it I'm only gonna risk me three three percent. Uh, but I do want to see it to come down back down into here before I actually do look for an entry. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. There will always be more trades in the future. Just typing in my meta trader here. Six, seven, nine, nine. All right, so should I enter, I'll resume the video again. I do believe for a go that we're at least going to see if I zoom in the market to come down to here, at least in the mid range. This, but I do expect that the just punch don't be, I don't think it'll be so clean. I think it'll just come down, it'll punch down a wee bit, maybe tap into this order block and then push up again. Now, is there a point I would not look for a buy? Yeah, it's here. If, if we clear this here to begin with, then I'm not going to buy because we we'll have all this imbalance up here. We we'll have this buy side liquidity up here. And that, that swing, and I'll explain why, is that this mark on the spy side liquidity so we see it if it takes out this swing <clears throat> then that would usually be where i would be looking to move my stop loss to entry depending on market structure and how many pips it is like i like to move my stop loss pretty quick so if we do come back top in this i i want it to push off and the moment it clears out there is the moment i'll be looking to move my stop loss actually to the entry so i'll pause the video and should i get the entry then i'll come back till it if not then i will just wait for another possibility another entry should it arise okay so the market has come back and it's taken out this high now it's just this screams up to me that there's still so much buy side liquidity here and imbalance so i still wouldn't be afraid to take a buy you know if the market came down made his way down into here i still wouldn't be afraid to take a buy to even take that out which would still end up like a two to one trade roughly if it takes out this first then that's when I'm really going to consider maybe walking away for a bit, letting it make up its mind. But taking out this has kind of put, you know, a pause in me of what to do. So I don't like to just jump into the trade just for the sake of jumping into the trade. But it makes sense that maybe somebody will see this as a double tap. So, for example, like there could be traders out there looking at this here as a double tap for example 
and it wouldn't surprise me if the market actually came up here and built up even more liquidity you know made a double top here before actually running right through it so i'm not going to be in any rush i'm still not convinced that we're going to be in a bearish market for the rest of the day i just feel like these need to be taken out and this imbalance here you know needs to be filled so still going to look for a buy entry and it just makes it a wee bit cleaner on the fib too because if i use my fib retracement you know we're coming down to 0 0.705 area which would be a real nice entry i do have confidence in that order block and if it breaks through that as i enter to it more than likely i would close it to be honest because i wouldn't want to see that happening so I'll leave it at that. That's what I'm thinking right now. I like to just record what I'm thinking. And I would do this. Um, it's my way of journaling trades also. This is like I tried the paper, the paper way of it, you know, taking a screenshot and writing down my emotions and all. But I like to take a video because this is exactly what I'm thinking right now and exactly what I'm feeling. And you can always look back on yourself. And if you make a mistake and not everything is a mistake by the way sometimes the market just doesn't play ball and that's fine but sometimes you can look back and go like just the penny will drop with you in a video and you've been talking to yourself through it and then you realize well you know my emotions got the better of me there or you know you could see i was fear missing out or i was down to get in and that's why i like videos so i find them a little bit more real if that makes sense because you can take a screenshot and you know write down the motion but it's not really in the moment it's how you thought you felt whereas this is exactly how i feel right now so i'll pause the video again just to make it a bit shorter and if we get into the trade obviously i'll resume it again and we'll go from there okay so we've started to come back down into the fair value gap now and if it hits the bottom of this fair value gap i'm going to enter basically because i think it is going to tap into this order block and possibly go long again um getting very close so i just thought i'd start recording and i've also marked out the order block just below just so people see what i see and what i'm thinking um when it comes to my entries or where i want the cutoff point to be now i do feel that if i go down and i get tapped in i'm going to move my stop loss pretty quick to below this here and um, should should the entry erase you know because i don't i don't want it and i don't feel it has the need to break down and any further i know there is a little for a value gap down in here um it might want to fill but i just don't feel it would tap into the yin you know right that's me in a buy now and i would like this i don't mind if it taps into this order block i'm going to do away with this for a value gap but i do understand that the lower side of this is basically like where my entry is or sorry where my sh my long position is is um pretty much in line the bottom of that fair value gap so i would like to see now say it does tap in it does make use of this or black i would like to see it starting to push up with just to take i would like to say just push up with a bit of pace to take that there right now and to take maybe stop losses or sell side buy side liquidity out here it is a little bit earlier than i would like to do it um i just feel that when the setups are the setups there to understand like I, I can't not take a setup when the possibility arises it's just it's just silly if i don't you know 
if it's wrong, it's wrong. We can we can move past. We we'll move on to the next trade. But under my understanding of what I know, and just to go ahead into higher time frame. In the previous video, I spoke about. I'm just going to remove this, but I said just to tidy it up. I spoke about the power of three concept, and it wasn't coined by me. It's ACT coined this, I believe. But we have accumulation along here and then we have manipulation down here just as I spoke about yesterday so that's why i'd like to see this come down this is the manipulation move and then i would like to see the actual distribution move punch up the way so excuse me my goodness right that would be a beautiful target to go for and this would be a very reasonable target to go for and that's why there's a bigger context why i entry like this candle here is obviously stands out the most let me clean this here up a little but no cell site's been taken out here I'm just i don't like too much of my charts it's just i like a clean chart you know i like to see see what i'm looking at you you'll get that point too uh, it might be a bit messy at the start um might confuse the life out of you. it will confuse the life out of you at the start but the more you do it and the more you trust in your strategy or your entry and this particular entry and um, you're going to start building confidence on it so that's that's just screaming to be taken out you know excuse me phone ringing here um this is screaming to be taken out this cell side's been taken out you know we've filled this imbalance over here um we've tapped into an order block i just feel now is the time to enter i'm going down into smaller time frames i have the change of character you know we still have liquidity here we still have imbalance here even if i only go for like say a two to one trade um two to one trade to take out this high it's it's still it's still a nice we try a nice we target nice we profit um or we can go further up and aim for this take out it from up there but we'll just play it by ear you know if we take out this high I absolutely will be moving my stop loss to Andre. Um, I do feel that if I moved, I do feel like I'm moving stop loss now, at least to blow this order block, which would leave me with half my risk. So a 40 pip, or sorry, of 4 pip, 6, 8, 4, 6. Six hit four six. Um yeah, so let's just aim for these highs first. We'll do that as our TP one. What I'd still like the overall to be just short of that, just to allow for the spread, so forty four pips. I'll pull that down to, I'm sorry, this isn't precise or perfect, but this is trading, you know, this is just a, a diagram, you know, the real entry is this, um, should we see now tap in that order block? That's not what I want to see, but at least of half my risk, and that's what I'm going to stick with. Zero. Excuse me, guys, I've been talking to myself a lot. I tend to do that. I'd like to see it starting to push up now. 
like to say break this high start making its way past this could use this as tp1 but i would like to use this as tp1 it's just because there's so much imbalance up there in this smaller time frame that i just feel should be taken out and yeah just feel it's proper entry to go for this market up as tp1 Bear in mind, guys, I'm sorry this is taking like, you know, maybe seems a wee bit all over the place. But as a gain, I usually just keep absolutely everything in my head. I don't need to put everything on the chart. And you, that's exactly how you're going to get to. You're going to get to the point where you know that's going to be your TP1, for example, because you know it's equal highs. You know there's an imbalance up here that hasn't yet been filled. And that's why it just makes for a good target. Um, and it's safer to take. It's safer to take uh, parcels out of the market, if you ask me. Because I like to, personally, I like to take parcels. I like to pay myself because, as you can see, there is a wee bit of work and a wee bit of build up till it, and it is. But you have to pay yourself. People say parcels don't pay. But frankly, for me, how I like to trade, they do. Um, some people, they prefer to hold out for their TP1. And to be honest, that's, that's actually awesome as well. Like we're all, we're all different at trade. And this is just how I trade. This is how I like to trade. I like to do a wee bit of work, a bit of analysis, wait, enter a trade, pay myself. Or not pay myself. You know, break even at least. And for me, I am going to move my stop loss to break even now because or I'm going to move it just below here. Because ultimately, I don't want the market. I don't want the market to come back down. I don't see a reason for it to come back down. So why not just move my stop loss to entry? So I can relax as well. Not that I'm not relaxed, but it just makes sense. It does make sense for the market to come back down to that area. Instead, it should be going up to take out liquidity, buy side liquidity. Or be a bit more reserved and go for this. This is generally this is not generally this is exactly how i trade and it's how i like the trade and it's how it's it's what's made me consistent is trading like this now i do prefer to hit an entry on a time i like to enter at um but this is just coming into the new york opening and that's when the market will get a wee bit more volatile and you can find your entries there too. I'm not concerned now if I break even. Like if I break even, that's fine. My I've done my analysis for this part. There's always going to be another entry somewhere. Um, and who knows? You just might shoot on to a huge trade. And that's the way you got to look at it. You can't force a trade. You can't be annoyed if you miss it. And you can't be annoyed if you break even. The annoying part is when you don't stick to your strategy, when you don't stick to what you have or what you should have written in front of you. Like I've, I've been trading from 2019 and I still have uh, a whiteboard. It's only like about an A4 size whiteboard, but I still have a whiteboard that I look at and tick off. Um, Every time I think about anything to that, I'll glimpse over at it. Because sometimes, I'm only human too, sometimes it saves you from entering a trade that you shouldn't have done. Um, I'll reveal all that. I'll reveal my whole strategy as time goes on. But I'm just trying to, in my eyes, my way of teaching people how you need to crawl before you can run. That's what I mean. You can't just go out and make an absolute bomb at trading without 
putting in a lot of work and a lot of understanding. Huge thing about trading, the one that, the kind of the penny dropped for me was understanding liquidity. You know, so that to me is liquidity. That's stops are there and then that we imbalance just on top of it. I know it fell in this imbalance, okay? So let's imagine in my head this is the imbalance I would like to see filled. And I'd say it does fill it and it comes back down. You know, it pumps up, or sorry, it pumps up here, it fills imbalance and it comes back down. I don't really care. I honestly don't care because if I can get that TP1, it's it's money in the bank for me. You know, it's parcels taken. If I don't and I break even, I don't care. It's it's a trade I entered, how I wanted to enter, how I always enter. And I just move on to the next. And that's exactly how you should too. The psychology side of trading is humongous, guys. It's don't understand how important it is like this just being able to relax in a trade takes a long time to do and the only way that comes as well is through it's going to be this line it's annoying the life out of me the only way to to do it is to do it just to get into the muck of it get into the middle of the charts and do it but don't do it until you have that understanding and don't put money on the line until you have that understanding. Because it's absolutely pointless. Because you're just going to eat away at your bank account. You're going to lose your money. You're going to... You, and then you're going to be upset with it. And you're going to say Forex is a scam or something. You're going to say, oh, this doesn't work. This strategy doesn't work. And the reality is you had money on the line. You shit the bed. And you lost a bit of money. And now you're sulking. And I'm saying this because uh, that was me. I I done it like I would have I would have said this doesn't work, and the reality is I caught myself on realize no, Fanny you're just not putting in the effort. Don't make excuses. There's people out there you've seen them make money, so you can go out and make it too. So I just stuck my head down and I just learnt what needed to be learned. The the stuff that is legit. Legitimate trading. We'll go out to 15 minutes just to go over everything again. This candle yesterday, yes, it did take out all this buy side liquidity, but it also, if I see on the four hour, you know, we had broke structure up here, okay? So, and here we, we didn't come down to take out this low. So, for me, that's us, maybe the market reversion. And I'm going to start looking for buy entries. Then we came up, the market's come back down, it's filled all this imbalance, it's tapped into an order block, whether it be the 15 minute, the five minute, you know, you can zoom right down to the one minute. We've had the power three, or should I say accumulation. I'm just going to mark this out. Accumulation. I like to make these different color faces just so it stands out a little. What I believe to be manipulation. Let's change the color on this. And hopefully, and distribution is what I'm gonna is what I'm aiming for again. I'm not always right. Nobody, nobody is. Sometimes you make, sometimes you just don't get it right. Sometimes you get it wrong, but I honestly couldn't care less. This video is all about what goes through my head when I'm looking for an entry and when I'm looking for an entry. Accumulation, manipulation, hopefully distribution. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not stressed about it. You know, you, once you have a, a, let's say, a faith in your strategy, so you're prepared to lose because you know in the end you're going to win. Um, I, I'm not quite sure who said this, but it got explained to me before. 
I think it was Mark Douglas. Uh, yes, it was Mark Douglas. Actually, he talked about like the probability, like how you flip a coin, and if you put, say, you you risk one percent to win two percent. So if you're flipping a coin, and every time you hit heads, you win two percent, and every time you hit tails, you lose one percent. The probability is fifty percent of the time that that's going to land on heads and now 50 percent of the time is going to land on tails but every time it lands on heads you're making two and every time it lands on tails you're making one so within then 10 flips you might lose five percent but gain 10 and overall you're five percent up does that make sense it's it's uh and that's a 50 percent win rate and say it's a 60 40 percent win rate you're still up four percent. Do you know what I mean? So you have to you have to realize that it's not over one trade or two trades or three trades. It is over a series of trades. Like this, this can happen ten times in a month, and you can end up the month maybe sixty forty in your favor, and you're actually up seven percent then or sixty percent. You know? Do you know what I mean? It's like. You have to look at things that way and you have to get over the, the fear of losing and you have to you know, have to put in a hellish effort to get over that because that was hard for me. I, I'm very competitive naturally. I always say I wasn't, but I am and I like to fucking win. I like to win. Sorry for the bad language. It's just it's my personality sometimes. I try not to curse on here, so... Apologies um, if I uh, upset anyone, but it's just I like to win. I don't like to lose. And then I had to swallow my ego before I started becoming, you know, full on profitable at this here and then getting funded, uh, which it took time. Like it took me, I'm sure I spoke of this now in videos, but it took me maybe two years, two and a half years before I was starting to see really good consistency and built up really good confidence in what I could do. But a lot of it was that time frame too was also because I got sucked into the like the, the that side of retailing that or trading that you don't really learn how to trade as such. You're only learning what everyone else is learning, the 98% that fail, you know, People talk about support and resistance and all this here. It's it's absolute nonsense. It's liquidity. It's just sucking you in to to, to put a buyer sell in. It's not support. Like if you look at look at tell me one bit of support and resistance that that doesn't tap two or three times and then gets busted through. Eventually it does because they know or the algorithm knows if you believe in that that there is liquidity line above or below double tops or double bottoms and i'll actually do a video on that in the future showing how a double top and double bottom is a bit of a farce to be honest with you is a bit of a scam um and yeah take it from there but i'll, I'll pause this trade for now uh not to make the video too long you know again I'm on break even. I am aiming for this as my TP1. I could aim for this, but I've got the entry I wanted. We could be taken out. We'll see. Whenever it gets close to either R, I'll start the trade again because I just don't want to make it too long. I know people aren't interested in huge videos because, like myself, my um, attention span isn't great. Some people's are, but mine isn't, and uh, that's why I don't want to make it too long. But I just hope people listen because it's not—it's not just about the trading; it's the info you get in between it. Also, the people may think I'm talking gibberish or in riddles, but once you're anybody that's doing trading long enough will know the psychology side of it means a lot, and it just takes something for somebody to say that'll that'll get you straight and narrow and trading again. I suppose I'm going to make this a bit longer because this is going back to something that ICT said. And it was like, it was like a godsend because I was actually in drawdown in my live account. Now, 
I don't panic about that there. It happens sometimes and it's fine, but I just couldn't find a trader. I just couldn't find the confidence, you know. And I was like going to myself, I had this urge to overstretch and get out of it quick because, you know, I'm a funded trader and I, I know everything now. That's just not true. Um, But he said, why, if you're in drawdown, why do you feel like you have to get out of it today, tomorrow, in a week or a month's time? Why are you rushing to get out of drawdown? Because sometimes it happens. Sometimes there's a month of just ugly looking markets and you you don't make money on it. You draw you draw down a little. You know, your your account depletes, but because you've risk management, and I have good risk management. I don't go into big drawdown, but I was it just the clicked with me, I was like, man, I'm actually forcing to get out of this drawdown like and he he was saying it was like he was nearly talking to me, like but he was saying in that moment, it's funny how things line up like that. But in that moment he said, Why do you feel like you need to get out of drawdown straight away? You don't. Like if the trade isn't there, the market's not there, leave it be. Relax, wait for the setup, wait for the moment when the market starts to come good and go your way, and then start chipping away at it. Drawdown, like I had a fella insult me one time because, oh, you're in drawdown. And I was like, she's what sort of trader are you, mate? You've never been in drawdown. Like, you must be better than ACT. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just got to remember stuff like that there. And that's why the psychology side of somebody talking sometimes can really help in, in your trading without you even knowing it. So it's starting to... It's starting to consolidate a little it's broke this high i wouldn't want to say break this low but it does chance of hitting the stop loss to andrew's pretty 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 probable the probability is probably pretty high but i'm going to pause it and we'll get back to the trade whenever it does either or and from there we'll move on to the next and that's it folks trade tapped out um, it is what it is. I'm not too concerned about it. It's it's part of trading. You know, that could reverse now and go all the way, but or it could just push on through. Personally, that's me done with that trade for today. I just feel now that the next time zone I'm going to look at is between 10 and 11 o'clock. And from there we'll go. There's no money lost, no stress. We entered when we should have entered. And now if this takes out this low, I'll be even happier because that just shows for me anyway that it's taking out this intermediate low. It may take out this long-term low or it may just give us a better entry for later on. So thanks for watching. We'll maybe go over this again. But well, now trade should have come up. I'll record it again and you'll see the reality of trading that you don't always win. You don't always lose. Sometimes you break even.